Four months ago, five months ago today, our consultant, Focus Strategies, delivered their report of a framework of a coordinated uh, regional system, effective regional system. The report was in excess of 60 pages and was not always well understood as to the implications of the future or how to actually Im implement it. We have taken the liberty to synthesize and simplify the report so that it is more easily understood and more easily to be implemented. You have a copy in front of you, and it's this. And I'm sorry that not all of you have it. It will be on our website tonight. It is on the front board, which I know I can't read it. So there are lots of copies on the table. If anyone needs one. there are some copies on the on the table, if you need some. This becomes the message of the, of the RTFH. From now on, this will be the unified message. When, when I was interviewed for this job, one of the board members uh, asked me three times how we were going to uh, get our vision out. And this is how. So when we speak, it will be from this page. All employees are reviewing how their job relates to this information and how they can recognize that everything they do helps to contribute to the goal of reducing and ending homelessness in one in San Diego County. We hope that all focus of the board members will also be in and around these topics. So I'd like to review this sheet with you very briefly, which is just a review of the 60 pages. So at the top, you see the goal is very clearly reduce and end homelessness in San Diego County. And we want when we talk about reducing and ending homelessness in San Diego County, we want any episodes of homelessness to be rare, brief, and non-recurring. The model that is selected is housing first. Today you'll notice that there is one house that is green. There are five more that are empty. We need to fill those up and as we give uh, subsequent reports, we'll be able to make them all green. Right underneath that, you see in small letters, and this will eventually be re, uh, removed from the report, Coordinated Effective Regional System. This was the name of the study that came back to us, Framework to Create a Coordinated Effective Regional System. We've used that because every, everything that we will do from now on is designed toward the goal Every action that we take, every decision that the employees make will be how do we act upon and reduce and end homelessness in San Diego County. The principles which we will be using are housing focused, people centric, data informed, and efficient use of resources. And the report itself broke it into five different categories. And the five categories, number one is political will, number two, system access, how does someone get into the system, number three, emergency responses, number four, system exits, how do people get out of the system, and number five, infrastructure. The number one, political will, is really an external application or an in external involvement in the community. And I assure you, I want everybody to hear this and hold me to it, we are working to be regional, even just regional. <laughs> So let me just review very briefly what is in each of these categories. The political will. One of the things to be successful in this is we need to be unified as a county, as every city, as every organization. Without being unified, that is a problem. And quite frankly, in this region, there's a lot of sub-talk. There's a lot of people going in their own directions, and what we have to do is to work on that. We need unified leadership, process and policy alignment, 
common agenda, shared measures. That is an exterior category. The next three categories are actually system categories. How do people get into the system? How do we deal with emergency responses and how do we get people out of the system? The fifth, the fifth is infrastructure. And this actually has to do with the RTFH itself because it's necessary that we increase the structural strength and integrity of the RTFH. In other meetings, I have shared that we needed a lot of help. Some would suggest we still do. Uh, and we're trying to, to get it. So within all of this, everything goes around housing first. So you can review at your time and energy all of the various aspects in each of the five categories. If you wish to take the time and go through the 60-page report, feel free, uh, because you'll find that it's all on one page. This is much easier for my eyes to deal with uh, and to refer to, and I hope that you as board members will synthesize this. So the real request today was that I give a report on essentially, what have you done, Gordon? What has happened within the RTFH to, uh, what actions have been taken in the last five months to move us forward towards our goal of reducing and ending homelessness? So I've made a few notes of uh, some of the key areas that uh, have done. I've been asked to report on the activities that the RTFH organization has been involved in to further this goal <coughs> since receiving the report and coincident to my joining the RTFH. You know, as a side, I should say a year ago today, I was just, I was still living in Frankfurt, Germany. And so I've come a long way. <laughs> Here is a list of the key activities that have, that have been or are being completed in support of the goal of reducing and ending homelessness in San Diego County. Number one, aligning political will. Now to be able to report on this, I didn't know quite how to do it and so I picked a very arcane method. There are many meetings that I attend with uh, public and elected officials with the purpose of conveying and teaching the vision. This is the vision. So I'm going to report on those. Uh, meetings with elected officials and government officials, 54. Wow. Meetings with board members, 44. Media interviews, speeches, and presentations, 39. Actually, I think this is uh, underreported. These are just the ones from my calendar. And I see that we have the press with us today. Uh, I don't know whether I can count this or not, Gary. I owe you a call anyway. <laughs> Members of the public, business community, and fundraising, 52. Which, when you total them up, I've had more than one or two a week. Number two. Uh, in fact, every one of those meetings is designed to help realign the political will so that there is agreement, so that there is a common agenda. <laughs> Uh, in fact, council member, I'd like, I was very pleased at the vote that was taken when the city council approved the funding for the tents that eight of the nine individuals, account, individual council members, in their comments mentioned that housing first is the way to go. It's the way to happen. I mean, that is incredible to all of a sudden have a group of individuals who are have different opinions. They do. But they are in agreement that housing first is the way to get through this. So good job. Each year we have a, a notice of federal funds application that has been used to reallocate funds and usage towards these goals, the goal of housing first. Over the past four years, the RTFH has reallocated 
and moved the funding for 48% of all projects. All funding this year towards uh, permanent supportive housing, including this year. This coming year, we will begin to uh, use the reallocation process to reward projects that are using the coordinated entry system to house individuals. So those activities will be rewarded. This is also a federal requirement as well as a best practice to be implemented. We handle the point in time count. This year we will begin a model project partnering with AT&T to use mobile devices to conduct the point in time count. This will be used in the portion of the count that deals with persons who are in the jail system. We need a test year to make sure the algorithms are effective. But then we intend to roll this out for the entire count the following year. Again, you'll notice that we are using a model that when it works, we'll roll it out region-wide. This pushes the data into the HMIS system, allows for a more accurate count by deduplicating the data, and allows us to get more and better clear information about the persons who are being counted. It can become more of an inter interview with a named person, all of which gives us better information. This, by the way, was that uh, you've all heard comments about knowing people by name. I used that phrase in 2014, 2015, when I said, we know everybody by name. And this was as a result of how we conducted the point in time count. New also for this year will be to split the vehicle count between cars and minivans and RVs because the needs of a person living in a car are significantly different than someone who's living in an RV. And we will have better information so that we know what the real needs are and what the real counts are. With the Homeless Management Information System, it is important to note that HMIS was designed to track program level data and report on those programs. Recently, HUD has redesigned the reporting requirements to, re to include seven key system performance measures. With this additional focus in opening our HMIS system, which we've talked about previously, we will be tailoring the level of expectations regarding the use of HMIS data to the level needed to meet our goals of reducing and endless and ending homelessness and not try to meet some esoteric research goals that are often requested of our HMIS personnel. Thank you for nodding. Opening the system exposed problems with how the system was set up years ago. They were not evident until we actually opened up the system. So now that the system is open, we are, the, our HMIS team is working hard to fix the issues, clean the data with the support of our partner agencies. We continue to incentivize participation in the HMIS system, particularly for those actively involved in housing homeless individuals. Just this week, as earlier was mentioned, the La Mesa City Council voted to add their data to the system. In addition, we have begun actively monitoring HMIS input data. Many of you have heard the phrase GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> We're going to make sure that there's less bad in and make sure that everything is going in well. The coordinated entry system. We're in the process of updating our policies and procedures towards <coughs> more actionable results, but are not completed on that. The push is that the CES system will be more action focused. When we heard that there were 40 families in the small tents at 20th B, 
The CES teams went there dire uh, directly there, assessed and matched all of them to housing. Since I have a list as of this morning as to where every one of those families is today, physically. So if you want to know where they are, I have that list right here. I won't take the time, Mr. Chair, to read it. Thank you. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. In addition, the Cypress housing project of 62 units has all been leased up with the process completed totally by the CES team. The reason I state this is that one of the things that I get back is, well, the CES team can't do it. And I just want to let you know that it can and that we will be working with everybody to make this a, a great system. As, met, as mentioned earlier, the next NOFA that comes out for federal funds will have a component that scores the number and percentage of housing placements that were completed using the, HM, H, the CES system. Emergency responses. The hepatitis A outbreak necessitated us to call in some HUD technical assistance to give guidance and to help in the development of best practices to deal with this issue from a homeless perspective. We've co coordinated two weeks of visits, had meetings with the service providers, participated with several phone calls. The outcome is that we have better coordination with the county, better cooperation and uh, collaboration with the county, service providers, and the RTFH. It has also helped us to facilitate better planning for future possible emergency. Tents are being erected by the city as an interim measure to housing of the homeless. You'll notice I do not use the word solution. Our CES team will be heavily involved in making this a success and turning an interim measure into one that will show success in the orderly placement of those needing housing the most. This will be a battlefield that will help mold and strengthen the CES team. I have a statement here on street outreach best practices. I think we beat that to death. <laughs> Fundraising. You've already dealt with this somewhat. When I came uh, and joined the RTFH, the RTFH was experiencing a $650,000 budget shortfall based on expectations. This were some of the things that uh, Supervisor Roberts really didn't tell me in full disclosure. <laughs> the board, this group, approved a budget last June based on last year's operations with the expectation that we would fundraise for these goals. Thanks to our donors, at January's board meeting, we will present an updated uh, budget that is balanced. Good. Special thanks go to Supervisor Roberts, Councilmember Ward, as well as Funders Together, the Sick One ba Band, Tom Sudbury, Andrew Ballister, as many other small donors. We are so grateful of the community. I received an email this morning, which I followed up within three minutes, of the opportunity to request another $25,000 from a donor. Uh, and we have another donor with another $25,000 that we're just waiting to hear, as well as several others. The community has been highly supportive, and I am highly focused. We are still looking for additional donors as we uh, expand our scope and reach and would like welcome assistance from other board members. I want you to pay attention to that sentence <laughs> because as a request, uh, we had a meeting of several board members this week about what is needed here. And what was needed was that I need to make more requests of you. So in a moment, I will be making more requests of you. So get ready to volunteer. <laughs> a major key milestone in implementing this part of the, infra of the infrastructure development, as well as the org code study done this past year, is the hiring of a chief operating officer, Tamara Kohler. Stand up for just one minute, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> 
and a community development officer. I hope that you'll take the time to meet with Tamara as uh, she is a nationally recognized leader in ending homelessness. Uh, we're very fortunate. She came to us from the city of Seattle uh, and prior to that she served as direct, director of homeless operations for the state of Utah and she was very instrumental in that state's success. Lastly, I want to thank Rabbi Larry Kosky of the United Way, who is our landlord. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is that we have need of more room to accommodate our growth and are looking for additional space. I'm hoping the board will be able to help us with that issue. Uh, as near as I can tell from the history, a year and a half ago, or maybe even a year ago, we had 10 people and now we have 29 or something like that. These are some of the highlights of what we've done at the RTFH to help implement the framework as outlined by the focus strategy study delivered of June 30th of last year. Are there any questions that you would like to ask of me? I have one comment as a health provider, and under the principles on the outline here, I do not see collaborative or strategic partnerships. And I think it's so important. I served on the scoring committee, and one of the questions on the NOFA is how we reach out to other key partners such as health, probation, criminal justice. And I think we really need to have strategic collaborative partnerships as one of our principles. Thank you. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, what we started with were the the principles in the study because uh, everybody has been interested in the study. The reality of it is is that we will be reaching out with everybody and every group as far as we can and as far as resources allow. Yeah. Gordon, I think one of the things that maybe wasn't clear when you were talking, you would have been successful in some of the fundraising efforts, but what that's going to enable us to do is implement yes. our plan and that's, that wasn't, there was no money for that. Okay. The reality of when, when I came, we had a $650,000 uh, shortfall. We had big plans. I call it all hat, no cattle, uh, for those of you who are from Texas. Uh, and what we've been trying to do is to support and, and create our own underpinnings. Uh, as I met with uh, Nick, I said, how many knees do I have to get on here, Nick? Uh, in order to get the help. And we are willing to do that, and we appreciate the support of everybody uh, in, in getting there. We will, uh, our next reports will be of greater implementation of action. You saw the discussion today of trying to move in, in creating best practices. Greg. Gordon, what can the board do to support implementation of the plan? And most importantly, what can the community at large, we have a nice audience here today, what can the community at large do? Thank you, Greg. And this was not a planned question. <laughs> this was not a planned question. I, have, I came, because of our meeting earlier this week, I came with three asks. So let me get on with the asks. Number one, fundraising. We need another $50,000. Who on the board would like to lead this effort? Hold up your panels. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't want to say in public, that's okay. That's okay. Think about it. You have contacts. You have friends. You have access. Some of you, I have your contact. <laughs> so we will be doing that. We need regional political connections and introductions. Who would like to help us with that? At any time, you know, yeah, feel, feel, uh, feel free to raise your hands. <laughs> All right. We did Chris too. Yeah, I, would, I was sharing, but we, and Brenda was aware, we, we had an item on the Sandag agenda to, to really to start to drive home and an understanding of what was going on 
San Diego, at that meeting had which most of the mayors of San Diego there. Uh, and if it wasn't the mayor, there was a council person for each of the cities, but it was primarily the mayors that were there. And after the meeting, I would share what I had two extreme reactions. One of the mayors wanted to become part of this board, which I was uh, very appreciative of. Another one asked me, why was I bringing something like this to San Diego? Why was I wasting my time with this? So uh, wow. we were somewhat successful at one side, a little less <laughs> successful at the other, but the, the mayor that was in a supportive from a much larger city than the mayor was critics. So, so I feel like overall we were okay. Anyway, uh, we're, we are doing everything possible to drive home the message, and I, I'm hopeful that when we begin to implement and do the things that this committee and this task force is going to have a much higher standing across the whole political spectrum. The third ask is I need someone with some real estate experience that would like to help find us uh, a new location. This does not exclude Reverend, I mean, Rabbi Lari. I don't want any daggers here. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll admit I've probably got more real estate experience than any of you. Uh, I've been a real estate broker for actually can't say how many years with this group. Okay. Okay. So I want to. I just want to make one more comment. You gave me the. Uh, you have to be careful of open mic, and I. I've taken advantage of it. We've got a timer on you, though. You're almost at the limit there. Well, actually, after a meeting this week, I'm not sure that's true, but uh, uh, I want to say I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I'm actually enjoying this. People say, why did you do this? This is too tough. It's not, because I enjoy the people that I work with, and I enjoy the community. It's fun being out and meeting with you. I am very positive as we lay these, ground, these groundwork, I know that we're going to be able to make some significant changes. And I look forward to giving you a report on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.